What's going on everybody, Shrewsberry here, and I have a tutorial for you dealing with the HUD displays in the workshops editor for the new Overwatch now on the PTR. So I've seen a lot of different people's codes, and sometimes I see HUD displays that are a bit wonky, they sometimes have glitches and they don't update as fast as you would like, so if you've had any sort of problem with the HUD, I'm gonna make this video to address any problem you would ever have with the HUD. So by the end of the video, you should be able to do any sort of HUD and completely understand how to display the important information in the right places and um, accurately. So here's an example. If you look at the top middle of my screen, here's an example of a HUD message that by the end of this tutorial, we will be able to make. So this is a ability cooldown tracker um, that shows the player we're on, shows the title, and shows the time and the value corresponding to it. So let's get right into it. Okay, so if we go to settings, workshop, add a new rule. So um, there are a few things that will be helpful to know. So depending on what you've tried out with the HUD display, there are a few common errors that I'll go through first, and then we'll go through building a great HUD display for an ability cooldown, just so that we can experiment with all the little different values on there. But one common mistake I see a lot is when people set up their HUD display, say they had some sort of event, and they said create HUD text, and they have that, and then they usually they set it up where you wait six seconds, and then um, you destroy all HUD text, and then you loop. This is one way to do it where, um, or say you wanted to wait 0.25 seconds, and you had some sort of variable in here that was updating. Um, I, I know we went through that fast, but I just wanted to touch base with this. Um, one thing that you may be, may be missing is that um, Reevaluation box down here automatically updates the variables that you put inside this HUD to the new um, values as the game refreshes on its own. So you don't really even need to destroy and redisplay the values. So you can go ahead and get rid of all of that and just display whatever you need to display and it will update it for you. But if you are brand new and you don't even know how to create this, I will go through these many boxes to show you guys how to make a good display. So um, let's first set up what we want to do. Let's make an exact duplicate of what I showed you. Um, so we need to make an ability cooldown modifier, say if we were to disable a normal ability on an Overwatch character and replace it with our own, we want to have our own display for our own cooldown times and status updates. So, first we want to make sure that this is only available to certain characters, not everyone. So go to ongoing each player. And then now you can select a certain slot. So these are like the players, player one on the first team. This is the last player on the last team. Or you can set it to a specific person. I'll just have it all for now. Now we need a condition for this to appear. I'm going to have when button is held, ability one. So when we hit our shift ability, if we want this to display. Now we need to create a HUD text. So there are a lot of different little dials here, um, but I'll point out the most important ones and tell you what you should ignore and what you shouldn't. So first is pretty important is the visible two. So by default, any text you display will be visible to everyone in the game. Oftentimes we don't want that. Say we just wanted that player that we're working on to be able to see the thing. So change this to event player, and that will reference the each player separately. So we can change our own values and say if one person's cooldown down is something, it'll be different for each person. So now you have three big sections. You have your header, your subheader, your text. So these are different um, sizes, different positions when you display them. Your header will be that big thing with a box around it, very thick letters, 
uh, not hard to uh, not hard to see at all. Subheader is the smallest actually of all the headers and it's above the text but to the right of the header and it's kind of just like if you wanted to categorize a few data points but you didn't want them to be jump out or anything. Text is more readable, it's your average size text and it'll be under the subheader and to the right of the header. Um, location here is where all of this will be located. You can either have it be left, top, or right. And this is um, on the top of the screen, so top left and top right. So this is like where the kill feed is, this is where the different player speaking things pop up. I like the top the most. Um, sort order is if you had multiple, you can give it a different value that shows where it should appear, but we don't need to worry about that. And then the colors for the different sections and reevaluation, we talked about that. The important part is when it comes time to create our string, you have to kind of do it in this weird funky way. So oftentimes um, we'll want to mix two different things. Say we wanted to say, your time is this. We um, will need to splice different things together using a string. String can take in text, it can take in variables, it can take in different icons and put it all in one. So say we wanted our header to be a symbol of a Genji and say the text ability one. So we know we're playing Genji and we just use ability one. Well, what we're gonna need to do is split our string into two strings, one that has the icon and one that has the text. And that utilizes these things down here. So these are, if you want to piece together different parts of a string. So all we have to tell the string to do is go and check what is in spot zero and spot one. So we need to format this somehow. Um, I like this format because um, basically what it'll say is go check what's ever in slot zero, put a colon, and then put whatever in slot one into the base string. So now we go down here and we can add, say, a hero icon, hero icon string. This means we can splice it into our string and do hero of the event player. That's whatever we're playing. And then we'll put a colon from here and then we'll jump down to one and we can put a global variable a you could also use a player variable uh, let's actually use a player variable so it would be different for each person um, so let's create a test for this we need to have our player variable though so say we uh, set player variable to six when we hit our button, and then we create a HUD text that has our variable, but now we need to make this slowly go down until it hits zero. So let's chase player variable over time. So this says we want it to be zero after a certain amount of time. You can also do it at rate, which is more versatile, but let's just do this for now. So at, in six seconds, we want it to be zero again. And then now at the end, we can destroy all our HUD text. So let's hop in to our game and see what's going on. See, so we grab Genji, nothing's here right now, but as soon as we hit ability one, Oops. There's one more thing we have to add to our script because even though we're chasing this variable over time, this doesn't pause the script. So we need to also add a wait. But this is a longer wait. This is a six second wait. And then at the end of which we'll destroy the HUD text. So a quick example of this, if we pop right in here, um, say we take Genji, 
Um, nothing's at the top middle, but you'll see as soon as we hit shift, something pops up. It's our little icon and our time until we can hit it again. And this will happen anytime I hit shift, not use ability one. So na now that we have that working and it's it's fluid, it's not jumpy or anything, we can make it a bit more complicated, make it a bit more fancy, and lay out the data a bunch, a lot neater. So let's open this up. Now we can utilize header, subheader, and text. So instead, let's say, um, have our Genji icon, and instead of just giving the time, let's say we're using ability one, and then use our subheader and our text to display the time. So we can keep the hero icon string for zero, but for one, let's instead put in another string, and this string will just say the text ability one. We don't need to use this string now to splice, we just have it be a string. Now in our subheader, let's also have a constant string. And this string will be time. Time's another keyword you'll probably be using a lot of. So this will just be a constant string. We don't you need to use these values and it'll say time. However, text, we can have be a player variable A. So if we look at this, we have our header and to the side of it, we'll have our subheader and our text. In our header, we'll have our hero icon followed by the text ability one. And then our subheader will say time and underneath it, it'll have our time. So if we grab Genji again, and we dash, you can see our brand new HUD text that says Ability 1, and um, to the side of it it says Time, and it shows us how much time we have left. Now if we were to switch heroes to, say, uh, Torbjorn, it changes our icon. So th that shows you that it changes based on different, different parameters. Um, so that's my tutorial for today. Hopefully this is helpful. If it wasn't helpful or there's any other questions you have, please leave it in the comment section below. I'll be sure to answer it. And I wanted to give a quick shout out um, before I leave. And that is in the past, not even a week or a little over a week actually, we were able to grow the channel from 100 subscribers to over 2000 subscribers. So I want to thank you guys um, for all that support. And I hope that the channel has been good for you. Um, also, as of yesterday, we've created a Discord server where you can s share your different pieces of code, have other people look at it, so you can see other people's code, play test with each other. Um, it's, it's been a lot of fun so far. I had a stream last night where we interacted with that Discord and we started to play test our own hero. Um, some people have been asking for that stream to be posted on YouTube. However, when I was streaming, I was only able to stream in 360p because my internet was not doing so great. So I think I will upload it, just a forewarning that the quality is not great. But I think I will make kind of a video going over the stuff we talked about in the stream. So I'll kind of wrap up the things we've been doing with our new hero. So that's enough rambling. Um, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time, thanks and have a good day.